Welcome to another interesting episode of your fun time with Miss Mo. Alright, so this morning we are going to be discussing some past questions in mathematics, especially common entrance. Alright, so if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, please and please kindly do so. You can introduce this channel to your friends, your loved ones, your classmates, your colleagues, your, you know, your children. Okay, so a very quick one. Let's look at these questions together and solve it and have fun with it. Alright, so... Okay, number one question says, arrange, arrange, arrange 2 over 3, 5 over 6, 1 over 2, and 1 over 4 in ascending order. In ascending order. What does ascending order mean? What does it mean? We should arrange from the smallest to the biggest. Okay, run and pop for yourself. So solution. Solution. 2 over 3. 5 over 6. 1 over 2. 1 over 4. Okay, looking at these numbers, what is the LCM of these numbers? Okay, let's assume it's 6. 3 can go in 6. 6 can go in 6. 2 can go in 6 without remainder. But 4 cannot go in 6 without leaving out a remainder. So let's try another number. Okay, let's try 12. Okay, 12. Alright, yes. Two, 3 can go in 12 without remainder. 6 can go in 12. 2 can go in 12. And 4 can go in 12 without a remainder. So that means our LCM is 12. Alright, LCM is 12. Okay, so we have 12 here. So we have 3 in 12. How many times can 3 go in 12? 4 times, right? So 4 times 2 gives us what? 8. Then here we have 6 and 12 gives us how many? 2. 2 times 5 gives us what? 10. 2 in 12 is how many times? 6. 6 times 1 gives us what? 6. And the last one, 4 in 12 gives us 3, right? Then 3 times 1 is still the same thing as 3. Alright, so let's share, distribute them back to their parents. So that we, we won't say no, mistake one for the other before we start arranging. Okay, what is this one? So we can, you know, distribute them this way. Then this one is the same thing as 8 over 12. So this one is, is 8 over 12. 8 over 12. The next one, all right, 10 over 12. Next one, they are distributing their answers, the children, back to the parents now. So we have 6. Over 12, and you make sure you arrange them with this 12. They all have rights to the LC hand. So, this one is 3 over what? 12. All right, so now that we have distributed them, we can now be arranging them based on what we have as our LCM and the numbers on top of it. So, this LCM now has made them to be common, as you know, made them to now become family members. Okay, unlike when this one has 3, this one has 6, they all have different. Denominator, but now the denominator is bringing them together. So, we are looking at this now. Which one is the smallest? 3 over 4. Okay, so where is the parent of 3 over 4? The parent is 1 over 4. You know, we are arranging now from the smallest to the biggest. After 3 over 12, which one is next? Okay, 6 over 12. And what is the parent here? 1 over 2. Okay, then the next one we have 10 over 12 and 8 over 12. So, between the two of them, which one is, you know, smaller? When you compare the two. Okay, so we have 8 over 12 and the parent is 2 over 3. Then the biggest here is 10 over 12. Of course, the parents are 5 over 6. So this is our final answer. So our final answer is 1 over 4, 1 over 2, 2 over 3, and 5 over 6. So we have been discussing else, uh, fractions all this while. So by now you should not have problem with getting your lowest common factor and you know arranging the questions the answer the final answer either in lowest common factor uh, sorry either in ascending or descending order i hope you got it all right so the second question okay number two now number two number two find the square root the square root of 
the square root of 4 over 9. This shouldn't be difficult. Okay, solution. So people used to have, you know, some, some of my students, I noticed that they normally have some, you know, difficulty in discerning between um, square roots and square. All right, square roots, this is the sign you're using. We have 4 over 9. What is the square root? So we are breaking it down to the smallest number that can be multiplied together to get these answers here. So what is the square root of 4? What can we multiply together? What is the identical numbers that we can multiply together to still give birth to 4? 2 times 2 is what? 4. And what is that number that we can multiply together to give us 9? 3 times 3. So our answer is 3. So the answer is 2 over 3. Then number 3. Number 3, a girl... A girl bought three sachets. Three sachets of detergents. Okay. For one hundred and twenty naira. For how much? Would would she buy would she buy 20 sachets okay a girl bought three sachets of detergent for 120 naira she bought three sachets of detergent such uh, as sorry a girl bought three sachets of detergent for 120 naira that's 120 naira. Then, for how much, for how much would, would, would she buy 20 sachets? Okay, she bought three sachets for 120 naira. Before we go further, we are supposed to try and know the value of one of the sachets. So, thank God we know the value of three sachets. So, Three sachets is equal to how much the ship buy it? 120 naira. So what is the cost of one sachet first? Okay, so the cost of one sachet. That means if she buys three sachets for 120 naira, so that means one sachet, one sachet will now give us 120 naira divided by three. So with this, is to give us the price of one sachet of this uh, detergent okay so three in twelve gives us four and we put back this zero so that means we have 40 naira so one sachet one sachet of detergent is 40 naira 40 naira so you go back to your question now so now that we know the value of one sachet so for how much we should buy 20 sachets? So that should be very simple now. So what do we do? Wow. We multiply 40 by 20. All right. So 20 sachets We now become 40 naira. We know it's 40 naira per one. Multiply by 20. So when we multiply 40 by 20, that's 4 times 2 gives us what? 8. Then these zeros, you won't show them away, you bring them back. So our answer is what? 800 Naira. All right, so 20 sachets is going to cost 800 Naira. So let's go to the next question, number four. All right, number four. The sum of 16... The sum of 16, the sum of 16 and 20 is divided by the product of 6 and 12. Find the results. Okay, that's number 4, right? Okay, the sum of 16 and, and what? 20, I hope you are writing, and 20 is divided by... The product product of six and two. 
Okay, so find the result. Find the result. Okay. So, the sum of 16 and... What do you mean by sum? Okay, sum means addition. When you plus, okay, addition. When you add numbers together, that's when we use sum, okay? And product means what? When you multiply, okay. So the sum of 16 and 20. First and foremost, let's bring them out. Sum of 16 and 20. So that's 16 plus what? 20. All right. It's divided by... Our division sign comes in there. Divided by the product. And product is what? Multiplication. So the product of 6 and 2. So product is the same thing as multiplication. That means this number added together... Is divided by when you multiply 6 by 2. That is what the question is saying. Okay. That's what the question is saying. And it's a very simple one. So let's multiply this now. 6 times 2 gives us what? 12. Alright. So we have 6 plus 16 plus 20 divided by what? 12. And what is 16 plus 20? It gives us what? Alright. 36 divided by 12. When you divide 36 by 12, what will be your answer? Okay, thank you. It will give us what? 3. Very simple. So our answer is 3. Okay. Number 5. Number 5. We have, if I find, this is also fraction, and it's very simple. If I, I won't even explain this. You have to be the one explaining it to me. Alright, if I spend 6 over 11 of my money, of my money, right, on books. Wow, that's good. Okay, what fraction, what fraction, what fraction of it will remain okay please i'm not even going to solve this with you we have been discussing fraction for so long so how do we go about it if i spend six over eleven of my money on books what fraction of it will remain okay five over eleven why do you say five over eleven okay so our answer is going to be five over eleven Okay, the reason being that we are dealing with 11 here. Okay, so if I spend 6 over 11 of my money, what fraction of it will remain? So as you, you we have, you represent this, you are going to represent it with strokes now. Alright, as we are representing with 11 strokes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Alright, then now... I want to, this are one, this, let's assume this is 1 error, 2 error, 3 error, 4 error, 5 error, 6 error, 7 error, 8 error, 9 error, 10 error, 11 error. Alright. And I've spent 6 over 11. That means I've spent 6 out of 11 error. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You cancel it. So how many fraction? What part? Do I see how it means? Let's count together. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have 5 over 11. Alright, that's a good one. Thank you very much. Okay. So, what number are we now? Okay, number six now. Okay, number six. Number six. In a class, there are... Yes, number six in a class. There are 20 girls... And 30 boys. Find the ratio. Find the ratio of girls to boys. Alright, you are finding the ratio of girls to boys. One thing about um, ratio is that 
However, you have been given the instruction, don't rearrange. Once you rearrange, you're, getting, you're going to get a different answer entirely. All right, so we have ratio of, so now we're looking for ratio of girls to boys. Don't rearrange, don't take boys to girls. With that, you're getting a diff, going to get a different answer. So what we're going to do here now is that solution now. Okay, so we have girls, right? Girls to boys okay so how many girls do we have let's go back to the to the question in a class there are 20 girls okay so we have 20 girls and 30 boys okay so 20 to 30 okay so we are finding the ratio now okay you can now place them over one another 20 over 30 what can divide the two of them okay 10 can go so 10 in 20 gives us two right and 10 in 30 gives us 3. Or you can just cancel the 0. It's leading to 2 over 3. So our final answer is 2 to 3. Very simple. So the ratio of girls to boys is 2 to 3. Okay, number 7. I hope you're following it. If you miss out in any, you can rewind the video. Okay, so... What number are we now? We're number seven. Find 80% of 20 naira. Okay, so we are finding 80% of 20 naira. This is very simple. Okay, so 80% is the same thing as, okay, our solution. 80% is the same thing as what? Okay. Okay, 80% seems to as 80 over 100, all right? Times how much? Okay, 20 naira. Zero, we cancel zero. Do you agree with me? All right. And this zero also cancels zero. So what do we have left here? We have 8 multiplied by 2. And 8 times 2 gives us what? 16. So our answer is 16 naira. All right, so that is 80% of 20 naira is 16 naira. Okay. And number eight now. Number eight. Which which of the following which of the following is not a perfect square? Okay, so which of this is not a perfect square? When we say perfect square, that means when you divide the number, you have no remainder at all. And you're still going to arrive at the double, the twin number of that particular number that divides the numbers we are going to discuss now. So we have 100, we have 81, we have 65, we have 49, we have 36. So here we are looking at the one that is not a perfect square. All right, the perfect square divides with divide itself without any remainder. All right, so hundred. What can we use in dividing hundred? What is the you know the number that makes hundred the perfect square? All right, ten. That's ten times ten, right? Eighty one gives us so hundred is the same as ten times ten. So this is perfect, this is perfect, good. 81 is equal to 9 times 9, right? So perfect, perfect. So 9 times 9 gives us 81. 65, what can we multiply together? What two numbers can we multiply together that will give us 65? It's a series of numbers that can multiply it. So it's not a perfect square. So let's see 49 before we conclude. 49 is 7 times 7, perfect, good. Then 36 is equal to 6 times 6. Good. Alright, so the one that is not a perfect square. So 6 to 5 is not a perfect square. It's not a perfect square. So that's the answer for this option. 65. Okay, number 9. Number nine. 
Number nine says, a gardener, a gardener is paid 12,400 naira per month. Find his total annual salary. Okay, number nine, a gardener, a gardener is paid 12,000. 400 naira per month okay find is total annual salary okay so this person is a gardener all right and it's been paid 12,400 naira every month so we are finding now his total salary for the year so whenever you see annual it means one year all right so how much is this person going to get for a year since he you know goes home with twelve thousand four hundred naira every month so now how many months do we have in a year we have 12 months okay and per month Per month it goes out with with or goes home with how much twelve thousand four hundred naira. All right, so what are we going to do now to know the amount, the total salary he earns in a year? Roll and pop for yourself. Okay, so we multiply the salary, the monthly salary by twelve months. Good. So twelve thousand four hundred multiplied by twelve. All right, I'm waiting. Calculate it for me fast. Alright, so what is your answer? Okay, let me quickly check. Alright, so 2 times 0 gives us what? Very good. 2 times 0, 2 times 4, 2 times 2, 2 times 1, 1 times 0. Do we write it there? Do we write it there? Okay, we place it here. Okay, 1 times 0 is what? 0, 1 times 0 is what? 0, 1 times 4, 1 times 2. 1 times 1, 1. Okay. Good. So what is the next thing we are doing now? Okay, we add it together. Alright, so let's add now. So, 0, okay. 0, okay. 8, okay. 4 plus 4, 8. 2 plus 2, 4 and 1. So our answer is 148,800 naira. 148,800 naira. That is what the gardener goes home with every year. So I wonder how the gardener will survive in Nigeria today. Okay, so the last one for now. We are, okay, number 10. Number 10. Number 10, we have a can of juice. Number 10, a can of juice. Okay, costs 120 naira. How many cans can, how many cans can one buy with 960 naira this is similar to the one we did earlier all right so a can of juice costs 120 naira how many can can one buy with 960 naira thank god we know the cost of one can all right we know the cost of one can. So how many can of juice can we buy with one 960? Okay, let's see. A can of juice is how much? 120. So now I have 960 naira with me. So how many 120 naira can I bring out of my 960 naira? So what sign are we using there? Multiplication, no. Okay, I have 120 naira 
I can I get it. I can get it. I got a can of juice. It's one hundred and twenty naira. Now I'm so big. I have a lot of money on me. I have nine hundred and sixty naira now. How many can now? How many one hundred and twenty naira can I bring out of my own nine hundred and sixty naira? Okay, so division. Thank you. So we now have nine hundred and sixty naira, right? Divided by. So we have, so our answer is 960 Naira divided by 120 Naira. So zero cancels zero. So 96 divided by 12 gives us what? Pass, please. Okay, eight. So that means you can buy eight cans of juice. Eight cans of juice with 960 naira. All right, I hope you enjoyed that short. Um, I hope you enjoyed that short um, math time, the short solutions, the short discussions. All right, this is part one. In my next video, I'm going to continue, which will be my part two. Let me give you a little time to go over again. You can watch this video, rewind it, go over it again. There is no need to rush. Mrs. Mo is always here for you. Alright, watch out for the next video. Until next time, bye-bye.